In the last section, Mark explained us the Teams Premium customization options. In this part, Mark is going to help us understand the Teams Premium webinars and town halls. And Mark is going to take us through the admin portal walkthrough on how to configure these policies and configurations required for webinars and town halls. And I hope you are really going to enjoy this section. Let's go and find out how. So we're going to switch gears now uh, and talk a little bit about um, uh, running events inside of Microsoft Teams uh, and some of the capabilities and, and uh, additional features that you get with Teams Premium. So when we're talking about um, meetings uh, specifically, uh, there are a couple of different types uh, that you've got included in your base licensing for Microsoft Teams. Uh, you've got meetings, webinars, uh, town halls, and for, for a little bit longer, you'll have uh, Teams live events there as well. Um, just bringing up this documentation to kind of showcase some of the, the things that we've got uh, from a meetings, uh, webinar, and town hall perspective uh, to give you an indication as to, to where uh, Teams Premium uh, changes some of the the, the capability and enhances some of the capability. So you'll see here we've talked a lot about meetings and we've talked a bit. Uh, we've talked about uh, meeting templates and and protection, um, things like watermarks, custom themes, all of those we've spoken through already. Um, but when we're talking about um, uh, webinars and town halls, Premium introduces a couple of things. Um, for town halls uh, specifically, we increase the capacity of town halls from uh, by default 10,000 inside of a town halls uh, inside of a town hall to to a, um, a premium town hall, which allows a scale of up to uh, 20,000 participants. Um, and then uh, we can break that down even further um, from a from a feature comparisons perspective. So we've got capacity changes if you're licensed with Teams Premium. And we've also got um, uh, some capability changes when you're licensed with Teams Premium. So for example, uh, using this table, we can see uh, some of the features, you know, for example, custom backgrounds uh, is a premium capability. End-to-end um, -end encryption, we've, we've spoken about briefly, is premium, um, again, specifically for meetings. But when we're talking webinars and town halls, um, we've got the ability uh, to, to really curate um, what attendees are seeing inside of a um, Teams webinar. So this is, um, uh, I'll just flick over here quickly. So this is you know, managing what, what people are seeing uh, during the event. So um, now this is a, a real-time live event that's, that's occurring. Uh, you've got the ability here, and, and this is a bit of an indication as to, to how this works. But on the left-hand side, you've got all of the people that are in this meeting or in this webinar. Um, but then on the right hand side, you can see encompassed by the red box um, what attendees are actually seeing. Uh, and as a as a moderator of an event or um, uh, as an organizer of an event, um, you've got the ability to um, pick and choose uh, what's presented on screen at what particular point in time. So if there was content that you wanted to be seen alongside a video or you wanted multiple video streams, uh, you've got the ability to do that um, quite easily. You can simply kind of um, select a feed and, and uh, send it live. Um, so that's a really important feature if you're looking to produce kind of really curated experiences for attendees. Um, we've also got um, some capabilities for uh, RTMP in. So that's um, RTMP is uh, real time media protocol. So it's the ability to have um, custom or, or professional style video equipment um, uh, providing uh, a a video stream into the meeting. So um, uh, I don't know if we've got a, an example here, but uh, if your equipment is able to broadcast a, um, a URL, um, the, uh, inside of Teams, uh, we can ingest that uh, as a stream uh, and then uh, present that in the webinar. So you're not just limited um, uh, in using your Teams client, um, you've got the ability to, to ingest a, a real-time uh, stream as well. When we uh, look at kind of um, the different types of events uh, inside of Teams, and, and we spoke about licensing uh, earlier on, um, uh, when we're running a, a, a webinar or town hall and we require the premium capability, we only require the 
uh, meeting organiser to be licensed uh, with that feature um, for, for kind of all attendees to benefit. Um, so we look at, um, you know, creation of a specific um, webinar or an event. Um, in order to do that, we can just come in here and, and pick the type of event that we want. Uh, I can pick a, a webinar uh, and then I can go through the, the experience of creating um, uh, all of the, the various different type of um, uh, information that's required to run a webinar. So we've got things like presenter bios, uh, we can set custom themes, um, we can enable uh, registration. Um, we can also have, um, if I save some of the details here, um, uh, add some details. Uh, I think I have to add some bios. Uh, and then I can uh, come down here and I can adjust, um, uh, you know, once I've, once I've configured all of the themes and everything that I want to want to have inside of my webinar, um, I can also have uh, reminder emails go out to them on a, on a specified basis. Um, here is kind of a bit of a template of, of what is um, uh, sent in that email. Uh, and again, there's, there's a bunch of different um, uh, options I've got here for configuring uh, emails to go out either uh, pre the event or post the event to share uh, recordings, for example. Now, when we're talking about webinars, often the next um, uh, topic of conversation is um, how do I make my events more uh, efficient? Um, uh, I think I was here somewhere. When we're talking about webinars, we're often the next question is how do I make sure that uh, the experience for my users is um, as good as possible? Uh, and of course, we've got some recommendations around um, and some documentation around how the, the people who are presenting inside of a, a webinar or, or a um, town hall or a live event are turning up, making sure they've got appropriate bandwidth, their cameras are uh, high quality, those types of recommendations. But what if we have um, users uh, inside of an organization, perhaps you've got you know, a thousand people inside of, of one organization, all consuming the stream uh, of that, that event all simultaneously. Um, when we have an event, uh, we typically, you know, on a, on a per client basis, consuming somewhere from you know, maybe one to one and a half megabits per second of bandwidth per stream. Um, if we've got a hundred people in that event, you know, or a thousand people in that event, we start to really um, ramp up the bandwidth requirements. Um, that's where Microsoft ECDN comes into play. Um, uh, Microsoft ECDN, as I said, is, is a, you know, this can be purchased as a standalone license type, but it's also included as uh, inside of Microsoft Teams Premium. Um, but uh, when we're looking at ECDN at a very high level, um, on the left-hand side, uh, before you have ECDN uh, in, kind of installed and configured, each one of these little um, uh, hexagons here is uh, consuming an individual video stream. So um, each one of them is you know, one to one and a half megabits per second usage of bandwidth through the firewall um, out to just consume that stream. When we implement ECDN, uh, we've got the ability for the Teams client to act as kind of a, a bit of a, um, a buddy for other Teams clients. So uh, once it's in, you can see here, uh, this client is consuming the video stream through the, through the corporate firewall um, onto the corporate network and then distributing that stream amongst clients uh, internally. So um, the bandwidth uh, requirements um, for an organization are, are significantly reduced. Um, you know, we've got organizations that, that, that we work with on a pretty regular basis that have got, you know, somewhere even upwards of 20,000 uh, users on their corporate network trying to consume an event. Um, mm -hmm. Without ECDN, uh, it it's, um, really is a, a losing battle uh, unless you've got significant uh, bandwidth available to you um, through your, your um, internet gateway. So once you enable it, is it like a peer-to-peer -peer networking, like peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, cache sharing or whatever? It, it is, absolutely. Um, we've had ECDN for, for a long time through, um, you know, we've had partners of ours 
uh, deliver that capability. Um, but what we've done um, through one of those partners, uh, and it's now a first party offering uh, included natively in the Teams client, it is exactly that. It's a peer-to-peer -peer, um, video sharing um, to help reduce that, that uh, the bandwidth requirement on the internet gateway. So um, as you can see here, they, these are all kind of sharing video feeds peer-to-peer. -peer. And you can imagine, um, you know, again, you, you might have 100 people on a particular floor uh, in, in one of your buildings. You might want to have those peer together um, and you get a lot of control from a from a configuration perspective on on that configure on that um, uh, uh, those you get a lot of control on those policies to to control which clients peer with which clients. So yeah. uh, you don't want to have obviously people uh, who are in the office peering with those who are on a VPN subnet, for example. Uh, and, and as I said, yeah, you get a, a, a raft of control on on implementing that. So when we're talking about events uh, in in Microsoft Teams, um, specifically at the moment, uh, Teams Town Hall, Teams Live Event, uh, and those events hosted in Fever Engage, um, they are all supported by ECDN um, uh, to help optimize those those events.